Oh yeah, we mean business today. Yes, we do. Got some serious music today because mm -hmm. it's really on track with what's happening here today in mm -hmm. Austin. Texas Relays. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, hello y'all, I'm Jayla Washington, your host, also Olympic correspondent. Mm -hmm. Gonna be heading to Paris this summer alongside. When are you leaving? Every time I try to introduce him, he does that. When do you leave? <laughs> Rich Siegel is his name, everybody. Good, good morning. <laughs> when, do, when do you leave? I leave July. I leave, July. I'm leaving in July, okay. July 21st. So March is now past. And I know. We have three more months to go. It's coming up. And I'm excited. And you're just going to get busier and busier. Busier and busier. And yeah. you know, it has been a busy week for sports here in Austin. Yes. The Texas Relays. Everybody loves talking about the Texas Relays. And what's really cool is there is an Olympian right here in Austin who competed in the Texas Relays this year. We're talking about that guy right there. That is Leo Neugebauer. He is a German native competing for UT, and he has already qualified for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. And actually at the Texas Relays, I just got word that he won three straight decathlons at the Texas, Texas Relays, including this latest win. His latest performance, the third best performance in oh, NCAA wow. history. Look at that comeback. Absolutely incredible. Um, we actually got to meet Leo and sit down with him a few weeks ago because I'm working on a story um, on him for Journey to Paris because he's just so incredible. He's broken so many UT records. He's broken broken uh, German national records as well. Um, and he really is just at the top of his game. So I want to show you all a little uh, brief part of that interview right now. How are you feeling um, with it being an Olympic year and it being right around the corner? Um, honestly, I feel like it's perfect for me just because how my, um, you know, career has been going. It's heading the exact right way, especially with uh, the Olympics being basically at the high point of my career. And it's hard to get even higher than that. OK, some fun questions real quick. Who's your favorite artist, like music wise? Right now, mm, I would say maybe Drake right now. Favorite TV show? Probably King of Queen. It's a it's an OG show, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, was, was so what's wrong back with that? Who said what? When yes. Said that? So um, the communications person for UT Track and Field who helped me um, facilitate this interview, she's sitting there just like watching, like so on edge. Like, what is he gonna say? He is such a hilarious person. Has so much um, personality. I loved getting to sit down with him also is just like very dedicated and committed to his sport as well. So you've got somebody who's just as good as he is and still just like finds ways to keep it so fun and yes, so light. Fresh. Fresh. Keep, yeah, it fresh. keep it fresh. Exactly. So um, and he's a decathlete. Right? Exactly. That's what they call him. Yes. Because he, he does so many he different does events. All of the, yes. He does so okay. many events. Um, and like I said, he's already qualified for Paris 2024. Good for him. But he's going to be competing for his home country, Germany. Oh, but it's really cool how he's yeah. here in UT and especially the Texas Relays. I mean, you've got all of these great athletes from high school all the way up to college who are getting the chance to be exposed to other Olympians as well. So um, really, really cool. Speaking of journey to Paris and Olympics and all of that, a uh, really cool story that my Olympic teammate Alyssa Orange out of Little Rock, Ar right. Fayetteville, Arkansas, Fayetteville. Um, did with a, an athlete, a Paralympic swimmer from Little Rock, Arkansas this okay. week. Um, I want to show you guys this and then I want to give you a little bit of background on what she told me after the interview. Okay. Go, Olivia. Don't ever remember not being in a pool. It's just like every day after school, that's where I would go. That's where I had fun. I was Olivia. the happiest. It didn't take long for Olivia Chambers to find her talent in the water. It's a challenge. It's exciting. It's fun um, to race yourself at the time, and then it's fun to race the people next to you. At 16 years old, she was finishing up high school and committed to swimming at Northern Iowa, when a moment in time changed everything. You know, one day I was just like, reading a book and all of a sudden I just couldn't see the words anymore and I was like well that's a little strange. I went to the eye doctor they told me it was completely normal so and that I just had an accommodative spasm and a couple drops and they'd get better. However after a year and a half her eyesight did not return. There were several really hard days where you know you just think like how how am I gonna do this? How? She kept doing the one thing she loved most swimming. All right, here we go. We're halfway there. Keep fighting here. Here we go. It really all started 
um, conference her freshman year. She finished her mile um, and that was an emotional swim. And her mom was one of our officials at the meet. And the two of us after the race were like, okay, like she started asking, how do we get into para? And I was like, okay, hey, we'll figure this out. Olivia's early successes include six medals in the 2023 Para World Championships in England and breaking five American records her first year of para swimming. Now with para swimming, there's like a little bit of hope where I'm like, okay, something good can come from this. And as she continues to navigate the mystery of losing her sight, she says she wouldn't have been able to achieve anything without those around her. They're always there for me when I need and I know it. And no, anytime I need a ride, any one of my teammates will pick me up and take me where I need to go. Her support system here is awesome and they're a really good group, but like her family at home is, that's the secret ingredient to it. And they're the ones that um, have kind of behind the scenes helped navigate a lot of the challenges. On the journey to Paris, I'm Melissa Orange. Using swimming to overcome an obstacle. Yeah, that's a great story. Incredible, incredible. Alyssa, um, great storyteller on my team, going to be with us in Paris as well doing coverage. Um, she told me, as you heard her briefly mention in the story, uh, doctors didn't think anything was wrong whatsoever right. and thought that her eyesight was going to come back and it never did. And can you imagine being that young wow. and going through <clears throat> something like that yes. and then being able to? overcome that and, and be such an incredible athlete in your sport now. Yes. Just absolutely incredible. Okay, Rich, it's my favorite part of the morning where we get to talk about all of the Olympic headlines. Okay. There's so much going on. There's one Olympic headline that came out last week. I'm going to save that for okay. the following week. First one, though, <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh U.S. Rowing my. announced its first 21 members of the Paris 2024 Olympic roster. That includes two former Longhorn rowers. We're talking about Kate Nifton and Daisy Mazio Manson. They will be the second and third Longhorn Olympians in the program's history, which I think is absolutely incredible. Yeah. We were checking our archives. We just did a story um, with Kate, like literally last year. So pretty incredible to see her um, qualifying for the team. And the University of Texas rowing team, always a success in conference play. And I'm surprised that it's just mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. of three. I would have figured it would have been more than that. It's a really, really difficult sport. I mean, like when you're watching it, it seems so simple, right? Like, oh, they're just, you know, rowing out there on the water. But if you've ever rowed before, That's like even le even for leisure, mm -hmm. like my shoulder would fall off. Yeah. <laughs> no, truly. So congratulations to UT for having those two former Longhorns who are going to be representing them at the Paris 2024 Olympic Do do you, do you think you'll get an opportunity to speak with them before too long? I would love to. You already know I'm, I'm cooking up in the kitchen, cooking okay. up in the lab. You know, right. I'm always, as soon as I find out somebody local is, is going to be in Paris, I'm automatically trying to get an interview with them. Good. So, Simone Biles, we're still waiting on her. <laughs> I will never <laughs> stop talking about Simone Biles. Right. Seriously, that one hurts. Okay, um, the next thing I wanted to talk about, Rich, is the IOC the International Olympic Committee is celebrating a really big milestone. What's that? For the first time ever, there will be an equal number of males and females competing at the Olympic first Games. First time. First time. It's a shame, isn't it? Yes, it is. Isn't it a shame? You would think that that's happened before, but, you know, there's always the, the talk about equality in sports and, you yeah. know, giving women the same access and opportunities that men have. And I think doing that on the Olympic stage, showing you know, an equal number of athletes who are both female and male competing really speaks volumes. Yes, indeed. Something else that's a little full circle about this as well is the fact that um, the Olympics, the first time women ever competed at the Olympics, you know, I had to do my research before this live stream. Of course. Was back in 1900 in Paris. Paris. Yes. Oh. So now that, you know, we see them celebrating an equal number of men and women both competing when Paris was the first it's place take, where women competed. It's taken 124 years to uh, make the number the you same. You know, I wasn't going to say it, but well, I don't hey, he's it. always going to say what I'm thinking. That's why he's my partner <laughs> in crime. Hilarious. Okay, and the last headline that I've been dying to talk about. Okay, let me just take a moment here and just breathe because... This is a fashion statement, more or less. <sighs> okay, y'all. Paris, obviously, we know the fashion capital of the world, okay? Mm -hmm. What better way to showcase that than a partnership with, with Louis, Louis Vuitton. Vuitton? We just have to roll the video. Let's take a look. Um, 
Okay, these are trunks that are going to be protecting and showcasing medals and torches of the Olympic and Paralympic Games. Oh my gosh, I really feel like I've died and gone to heaven. Absolutely stunning. These are going to be what athletes are going to see their medals in before they get those medals that they've rightfully earned. Um, like I said, Louis Vuitton partnered with LVMH, that is a French multinational luxury goods company, mm -hmm. and they just kind of like subtly dropped this gym that they're going to be rolling out medals in these trunks. When I found this out, I was like, we've got to talk about this. Where's that going to be kept when the Olympics are competing? I know. I wonder, know? Where gonna, I wonder where they're going to keep idea? it. And look at how intricate that looks. Like, I wonder how much time it took to craft all of this. I mean, and you'd have to imagine, you know, look at that. Look, That's one of the torches. Is this going to be a story that you'll find oh and, and you'll deliver oh. maybe before the Olympics well, start? Well, first and foremost, if I don't do anything before I leave this earth, <laughs> mark my words, it will be doing a story in some capacity on these trunks that are going to be holding the Olympic medals. Wow, yes. Super, super exciting. So... That um, about wraps it up, though, for us here on week three of our Olympic Live. Is there any other any other hot takes you wanted to Not weigh in on? Not yet. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to wait. <laughs> I, I know the one story that we want to talk about next week may make some people laugh, but you know what? <laughs> we'll let them wait. <laughs> nice little teaser there. It's... Um, it's a, it's a story that maybe makes sense to a lot of people if you followed the Olympic Games over the years. Um, and, you know... Being safe is better than being sorry. We're going to keep it as I well think. as as a little bit of a secret now, but we <laughs> promise you it'll be the headline next Saturday. <laughs> it will be. Yes, Thank you. Will. I have You're so welcome. much fun with you every Saturday morning doing Thank this. You. Thank you all for tuning in week three <laughs> of our Journey to Paris weekly Olympic live streams. We will see you back here next week talking about local athletes who are trying to qualify, Olympic headlines, anything else Rich and I feel like talking about. We appreciate y'all joining us. See you next time.